I'm CEO at Danby, which is actually not even a tech company. We sell bar fridges and wine coolers and stuff like that. Reasonably small Canadian company, do about 400 million in sales. And my goal is to inspire you long term. If I inspire you tonight, that's great. But if you get inspired and change something long term, then I will have been successful tonight. So I, I uh, wrote a book called Zero to Two Billion Dollars because I started my business from zero and I grew it to two billion dollars. I grew it to 350 million in sales, sold it to a company and then ran the company that bought mine from 800 million to two billion. Um, if anyone emails me, I'll even email you uh, a version of that book. So I started my business um, designing circuit boards because I'm an engineer. Uh, I needed a computer, got a better deal if I bought two, so I bought two and uh, <laughs> sold one, and then I started selling and uh, buying and selling computers. I did not have any angel investor. I tried. I didn't have a VC. So I did not raise any money until I was doing $68 million in sales, which took me 15 years to get up to that level. Um, I split my company into two companies because I was designing circuit boards and I was selling uh, computers called EMJ. So I split into Connect Tech, which is still in business today, and EMJ became my uh, computer distribution business. My sales, 450,000 in sales, a million, 1.9, 2.6, 4.6, 5.6, .6, then 10 million, 21, 41, 39, 40, and then 68 million. So what happened was I learned, you know, going 41 to 39 to 40, no growth is real bad. Growth is fun, growth allows you to drive efficiencies in. And the other thing you'll notice, my, I didn't grow very fast. This is, this is over a long, long time for me to grow even to $68 million um, in sales. Um, that's when I did my, uh, my IPO and that was the first outside capital I took. And then since then I've done a lot, or during that time I did a lot of angel investing. The most famous one I did was a company called RIM at the time, Blackberry. I was one of the founding directors on that company and I was a director on that company for the first 13 years. I left that company board when I retired the first time and moved to New York, that was about six years ago. Um, and I've invested in a, a hundred other companies uh, around that time. I actually have invested in about 150 companies. Um, I've sold uh, about 25 of those. So 10 years later, I was doing 350 million in sales. I sold to Cynics, 800, 800 million to 2 billion. Retired, moved to New York, did the venture capital thing. Um, by then I had about 150 investments. Um, my dad got sick, so I uh, moved back to Canada about a year and a little bit ago. I sat on the board of this company, Danby. The uh, CEO quit, so I unretired again, and, uh, and now I'm doing uh, Danby. Uh, I, well, when I came back, my dad was sick. My dad's was Don Dwight Estill, that's his, his name. So I called my company DDE Media. It's a little SEO company that I started. Um, and uh, it's, I still have. So it's tough to have two companies, and that little company, DDE Media, I only have like 11 employees, but it's still a company. It's not Danby, but it's still, uh, still a company. So what are the secrets to success? First secret is there is none. It's all the little things. Now, see, my business, I actually didn't have, I didn't have the unique special sauce. I was doing stuff that other people did. I was selling the same things that everybody else does. And that's the way all my businesses have been. I've always been in competitive businesses. It's all about the little things. One of the earlier speakers said, focus, focus, focus. I'm not good at that. I am good at failure. Fail often, fail fast, fail cheap. So I, what I've done is a lot of failure and that has made me highly successful. Now the key is to do the fail cheap thing. And especially when you're doing uh, angel and venture capital, so everyone says, oh, I'm really successful in, uh, in venture capital. I've, I've had 25 exits. I've had 25 exits and 100 down to zero. Key is to invest more and more in the ones that grow and, and learn to shut it off. Another thing I believe is success has a lot to do with knowing yourself. The more you know yourself, the better you're able to make decisions and be better you're able to pull on your unique capability. So I focus a lot on knowing myself. Another thing that entrepreneurs are not good at is managing downside risk. So that's tough to do, because you always think, oh, upside, upside, what are you gonna do? But think about what's gonna happen on the downside, and the more you can think about that, and that worked for me in my business career. My brother was in, in the business, and he was, he's a no guy. So anything we wanted to do, his answer is no. I, I just knew that was the answer. And so 
Um, even after he left the business, I would always say, well, what would Glenn say? What would he say? And then I would think about the downside, because he was such a negative, you know, nothing's ever going to work, isn't it awful kind of guy. He, made, he ever, actually never made any mistakes. I'm the one that made all the mistakes. Another one which I believe in is being frugal. And the, one of the reasons that I'm as frugal as I am is because I, had, I raised no capital. So I had no money, therefore I learned to run the business on no money. And, uh, and it, it definitely uh, paid for me. And, and another thing about frugal is being frugal with the time use. So the first book I wrote was actually on time management because I was so focused on uh, managing the time and getting things uh, right. Another thing I believe in is nurturing a network. So give freely to people and be deliberate in building a network and it will come back to, it'll pay rewards even though you don't know whether doing it now, sending you all a copy of my book, zero to two billion, I don't know whether it work or not, right? <coughs> <coughs> Any questions? Yes. So how do you make a failure, whether it's cheap, fast, or not often, and is there lessons that you can learn from that? <coughs> so how do you learn from your mistakes? How do you make a failure into a lesson? You know, wisdom is learning from other people's mistakes. And I'm not that good at that. I tend to look at a business and say, well, they're stupid. When I go do it, I won't be, I'll be able to do it. But when I go and fail, I tend to learn more about it. But you have to be really careful not to focus on that. Because you focus on it, you start saying, gee, I am a failure. You're not a failure to have a failure. As a matter of fact, you're a success to have a failure because most of people go through life never taking chances. So, next question. Yes. In the back, yeah. So, so the question is, what motivated me to sponsor 50 Syrian families to come to Canada? <coughs> well, lar largely, um, you do the right thing. So it, it's the right thing to do, and someone has to lead, and the government wasn't doing it, wasn't doing it fast enough, and it's actually not as tough as what everybody thinks it's going to be. So it's not actually the money. The money, I'll tell you, the money was, was, is the minus, minor, most tiny piece of it. It's the orchestration. So I set it up like a business. So I have a director of housing to get people into a motel for the first three days, then into a billet for the next six weeks, and then into a permanent home. I've got a director of transportation to go pick up the couches and the furniture that we have. I've got, um, and, and to, of course, transport the people, figure out how they get to work. I've got a director of jobs. What kind of jobs are the people suited for? I've got a director of education and training. What sort of ESL? And I run it like a business. So I've got a scorecard. Uh, well, I've got a checklist. So I've got a mentor, director of mentors. Each family has an Arabic-speaking mentor family. Each family has an English-speaking mentor family. And they have a checklist. Take them to the library. Get them a library card. Ride the bus with them. Show them how the bus, bus goes. Take them to the market take them to the rec center, do the stuff that they need to do for everyday life, and at the same time be their friends in Canada. <coughs> and then we have a scorecard. So every two weeks they do a scorecard to say family needs psychological help, family needs health help, dental help, um, ESL isn't progressing well for uh, mom needs uh, whatever, so scorecard and whatnot. So it's the process is um, as much, I would say, as the uh, as the money, and really it's just do, do the right thing. I'll tell you when you're successful, you should do two things with your money. You should invest 150 tech startups. That's the first thing. <laughs> Second thing you should do is give a little bit back to uh, where, where it's needed. And uh, at, at the same si time, I would say, don't be afraid to give back, even if there's a bit of controversy. So, okay.